Hello everybody, welcome to the intermediate lesson three of Mr. Stanley's Chess Academy. What we're going to look at today is we're going to think about a, another opening um, that is called the Spanish opening. We are then going to have a look at three things to look out for in the middle game. So things to, to look for in the chessboard to catch your opponent out. And then in the end game, we're going to look at how to get a checkmate with just a king and a rook against your opponent's king. So we'll start by looking at the openings um, and we're going to um, look at the Spanish opening. Now it's called the Spanish opening because it was created by a chap called Roy Lopez or Roy Lopez uh, back in the 15th or 16th century, I think it was. Um, so it's a very old opening and he played it a lot and made it very uh, famous on the, on the chess scene of Europe at the time. And it starts like this, so it's nipping for white, and you start by moving your king's pawn to e4. And then black responds by moving their pawn to e5. And then um, you move out your knight, just as in the Italian game, threatening this pawn here. Black will usually respond by moving their knight here, protecting this pawn. So uh, if the knight takes this pawn, then this knight will take the white knight. Black will have three points. They'll have your knight. You'll only have one point, you only have their pawn. So that wouldn't be a very good thing for white to do. So, so black is defending this pawn. Now, the next move of the Royal Lopez opening or the Spanish opening, is to move this bishop here. Now, in the Italian opening, the bishop goes to c4. But in the Spanish opening, or the Roy Lopez opening, the bishop goes to b5. Okay. Now, the key idea with this is that the next move, so say black moves the pawn here to chase the bishop away, if the bishop takes the knight, the knight is no longer protecting this pawn. So, bishop takes knight, the pawn takes the bishop. So far, so good for black. It is a bishop for a knight, both are worth three points. It's looking okay. But now, white can come along and they can take the pawn here. Um, it's also worth noting as well that black have got two pawns on the same file. This is actually not a very good thing strategically. We'll talk about that in a different video, but this also weakens black position. So already white have got uh, two pieces in the centre. They're covering this um, centre square here. So it is a, a very strong position to be in. So let's just look at that again. So first move e4. Second move, and third move, the bishop goes to b5. Where's that pawn going? Let's put that pawn back and it seems to disappear somewhere. Um, now, if black uh, does this move here, you might think, uh, oh no, because if I take the knight here, suddenly this is now defended and I'm not going to I'm not going to take this now because this pawn will take me. But don't worry, because here this bishop is stopping this knight from moving. It's what we call in the trade a pin. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So this, this knight is pinned into position. And that's actually quite a good thing for white to achieve. So this, op this, this opening, this Roy Lopez or Spanish opening, is a kind of super aggressive opening. Um, compared to the Italian game, the Italian evening, which is just a little bit, a little bit softer and a little bit quieter. So let's just go through that again. Can you remember the next move? And the next one. Pause at this point if you haven't thought about it. The bishop goes to here, goes to b5. And then black might do that. And at this position, you might want to. Where's that? Where's that pawn? On? You might want to castle, for example. At this stage, there we are. Uh, and so, 
Um, already we've got two uh, of our own pieces out. We've castled, we've got a piece in the centre, putting pressure on the centre. So you can see that this is a, a, a quite a powerful bed printing. One more time, why not? Remember, we need to try and learn these openings off by heart. So, uh, just go over that again. And then, and then maybe castle. Okay, let's now go uh, on to the middle game, and we'll we'll continue we'll continue this game for a little bit little bit longer. So um, if it's oh, what's happening there? So if it's black's move, we'll move this knight out to here, and we'll move that out there. Maybe this to move there. Uh, this to there. This to there. And let's, uh, let's say that Black makes a mistake and plays this move here. So this is at the end of the opening. Um, both sides have got most of their minor pieces out. Um, and so they'll be now entering into the middle game. So in the middle game, you might uh, be thinking, what on earth do I do next? Um, you know, I've, I've followed Mr. Stanley's instructions. I have... Um, I have developed my pieces, I've got all my minor pieces out, I've, I've learned the openings, and then you're faced with this situation, what should you do? And it's when you start looking for certain patterns and certain things to look out for where you can put pressure on your enemy. And we call these things motifs. So you're looking for certain motifs in the game of chess. And we're going to look at three motifs today. One of them is a pin. Another one is a fork, and the third one is a skewer. So we'll start with pins, because we've just talked about those before. So in the Roy Lopez opening, or the Spanish opening, we have here a classic pin. This knight cannot move, because if it does, then the king will be in check. So that would be a completely illegal move. You're not allowed to do it. Okay, so this bishop is pinned into place it can't move there are there is another pin on the board in fact there's another two pins in the on the board i wonder if you can see them so one of the pins is here so legally this knight can move if it wants to but if it does then the next move black will come and take the queen so the queen's worth nine points so worth three bishops um and and the and the white would be nine points down and would almost definitely go on to lose the game so so moving this knight would be a really silly thing to do so again this knight is pinned into place and i hope you've seen this other pin here so white is actually pinning um black's knight here so there's some a few examples um, of pieces being pinned. Um, just to move a couple of things to illustrate the point further. So if we if we think about uh, this position here. So in this position, this uh, with the rook, this knight here is pinned. You don't want to move it because if you do the rook will take the queen. Okay, so um, so that's the that's the idea of a pin. So one of the things that you can do in the middle game is you can look out, scour the board to see if you can see a pin, and if you can to move to, to do that pin. If you can't see a pin, so say if you're in this position, you might think, well, there's not a pin at the moment, but if I moved my bishop to b5 then that will create a pin. So maybe move your pieces so that in one or two or three moves time, you can create a pin. In case that's one thing to look out for. The other thing to look out for is um, what we call in the trade a fork. So let's imagine that the knight is on b5 here and um, the, let's just shuffle a few pieces around to make it, to make it work. Let's put the bishop there. And a queen there. So say, say that you're in this position. Now, 
Um, in this position, there is a classic, what we call a fork. Now, a fork is when one piece is threatening to take two other pieces on the next go. Just like a pitchfork has two bits to it, um, it's the same idea. So if in this, in this situation, the knight takes the um, pawn on c7, then you can see that it's attacking the king and the king's in check. But also it's attacking the rook. So in this position, the king has to move out of check and then the next move, the knight would come and take the rook. And so that is a fork, and this is a classic fork, which lots of beginners fall for. Um, so, so maybe you know, really look out for it and, and try and move, what's happening with my computer today? And try and move your um, pieces into those positions. If you're trying to fork with a knight, then always look out for uh, the two pieces being on a similar color and thinking about which square to attack. Um, it doesn't have to be just the king that's fought. So in this position, if uh, if you took uh, the pawn here, then there's check, threatening this piece as well. But you're also threatening this queen. Now, when you check, when, when you fork three or more pieces, it's called a family fork. So this is an example of a family fork here. So the king might move out of the way and then uh, take the piece there. So there's an example of forks with the knights. Now the other piece that is really um, a really good piece to get forks with is the bishop. So in this position here, for example, we'll put the queen back in just so it looks right. Oh, that's not a queen. Um, so if the bishop takes this knight, then check, but also threatening the rook here. All right, so you can get um, you can get forks with a bishop as well. Another um, another piece that that can get forks, but it's quite a, a bit rarer, is with pawns. So uh, if this pawn was here, oh, if this pawn was here, for example, then it is threatening to take the knight and threatening to take the bishop. So look out for for forks all over the board, and think about how can I uh, how can I find uh, somewhere to fork. The final um, thing I'm going to show you is the idea of a skewer. Now I've cleared the board just so, just so it's clearer uh, what a skewer is. So if we're in this position here with a uh, with a bishop here, so if this bishop now moves uh, onto f3. It is skewering the king. So just like uh, you put a skewer through kebab meat to cook it, it's the same idea. You're skewering the king on this kind of kebab. So, so the king is in check, has to move out of the way, and this means that the bishop can come and take the rook. Um, doesn't have to be the king, of course. So if we if we make sure that the bishop is supported there, and we have a queen, and then we have the, the rook there, then uh, if the bishop moves here, then again, the queen is now skewered um, because she doesn't want to get taken, so she'll move out of the way and then come and take the rook. And it doesn't just have to be um, bishops that do skewering, of course, a rook can do some skewering as well. So here's the rook moving there and skewering along here. So the king moves out of the way and then take the queen next time. So have a look around the board to see if you can see any skewers or see if any skewers are, are, are going to happen in the next two or three moves and then uh, put them into operation. So I hope that helps. So when you're thinking, what do I do now in the middle game? Have a look to see if there are any forks that are either going to happen right now or that you can make happen in two or three moves. Have a look to see if there's any pins or have a look to see any, any skewers. Finally today, we're going to uh, look at how we can get checkmate at the end of the game if all we're left with is a king and a rook and you're playing against the opponent about all they're left with with the king. Now, in the uh, last week's lesson, we looked at how to get checkmate with a just a king and a queen. 
And if you remember, we talked about the idea of creating a box and um, slowly closing the, um, the side of that box until you've trapped the king either to the side of the board or to the corner. Now, when you're trying to get checkmate with just a king and a rook, the principle is exactly the same. It just takes a little longer um, to do. So, um, so here we have this situation. I say it's white to move. Now, the first move is you need to try and capture the king in the smallest possible box. Um, so in this situation, the smallest possible box would probably be to move the knight here. Now, you wouldn't move it to d4, of course, because the king would just take it. So the box is quite big at the moment. Look at that. So that's the box. The king can't move outside that box. It can't move on to um, the C file because it will be in check and that's not allowed. And it can't move on to the third row because being checked, that's not allowed. So that's the box it's trapped in. Black might start trying to attack your rook at this time, but that's OK. You can just bring up your king to defend your rook. So black might go here. You might be tempted to now move to d4, but don't do that because the king can take you. So just be patient. Just be patient. Let's, let's move the king up a little bit. King still can't get out of here. Um, and so might go to, say, e6. Now, at this stage, you can close the box just a little bit. At the moment, the box is like this, but we're just going to be patient. We're going to take it slow. So we'll just move the rook here, closing the box just a little bit. The king's getting aggressive, starts attacking the rook. At this point, you might want to run away with the rook and think, oh, no, this isn't, this isn't good. Don't keep the box. Um, the king, you might want to move away, but don't because it needs to support the rook. So just, just move the king next to the rook here. We've got, we've got time. Um, the box is still in operation here. And so the king might say move to e3. Now, let's just slowly move this king up here. Um, black might go to f6. And at this point, we can close the box just a little bit again. Look, just a little bit. Black might get aggressive again, but that's OK. We'll just shuffle our king around to protect our rook. Um, black might go here. Oh, look, we can really close the box now. And there we are. The king's still supporting the rook. The box is getting smaller. And maybe we'll take the king around this way this time. And we can now close the box up a little bit more. So the king's now only got these squares to play with. So that might do this. And then we can sort of move our king around here. Slowly closing the box now that the king only has those four squares to play with because the white king's got these two. So it might go here, for example, and then we can just slowly close the box a little more. Now, when you're in this situation with a queen and a king, you be really careful not to get stalemate. So you need to make sure there's always a square that the king can move to, else it's a draw. But you know, we have to worry about that with the king and the rook. Um, you can't really get stalemate. Uh, with just the king and the rook. So um, the, uh, the king might move there. And then maybe, oh look, we can we can close the box. Ooh. We can uh, cl we can close the box again. Look, look how small this box is getting now. The king can only move to this square. So he moves there. Threatening the king, but just shuffle up your king. And now the king can only move to this square. And then we now have check, king can't go here, can't go here, can't go here. So it's checkmate. All right, so um, this is how to get checkmate with a rook and a king. Other patterns to look out for with this. Um, so uh, here we have here in this situation, then the rook just comes along here and gets check to the king there. And the king can't move into any of these spaces because uh, this king here is protecting them. So this is checkmate. Uh, so if on the back row here, we want the, the, your king facing the enemy king, and then we bring the rook down, checkmate. So there's lots of little patterns there where we can do this, but it's the same principle. You just slowly close the box in order 
to um, work your enemy to the corner. So let's just go to that again quickly. So moving the rook to the smallest box, even though it's quite big, we've got time. And then uh, just taking your time, slowly closing the box. Closing the box, there's the box. Closing the box. Closing the box. Oh, careful, just shuffle the king about. Closing the box again. Well, it's a bit of an awkward situation, so I'm just going to move my, my rook over here because we just need to get back in step with the. Um, so we can close the box here. Wow, well, my computer's doing all sorts of funny things today. All sorts of funny things. There we are, so we'll, we'll slowly shuffle along there. There we are. And then the king's forced to come back out here and checkmate. Okay, so slowly close the box and then maneuver yourself in a position where you can get one of these checkmating patterns. Great, so I hope that was helpful. So we've had a look at the Spanish opening or the Royal Path opening, a very aggressive opening for white. We've had a look at forks pins and skewers, things to look out for in a little game, and we've seen how to get a checkmate with a rook and a king. Uh, thank you for all your hard work so far and your great feedback, um, and I look forward to seeing you next week.